The high priest, adorned in the finest purple ceremonial robes, stands before the great, bull-headed statue in the darkened belly of the castle. The year is 850 CE. Masked worshippers whisper chants of holy reverence on all sides. He is in his element. Everything they do, they do in service of the great god Moloch. All around them, banners bearing the sigil of the brazen heart hang. It's a celebration. Just a few hours earlier, their forces had invaded an enemy church in the hills. They'd slaughtered most of the congregation in a sudden whirlwind of bloody violence, staining their swords in the great Moloch's name. But as the high priest had ordered, some of these blaspheming Christian churchgoers were taken prisoner and brought back to the castle for questioning. Here, the high priest would deal with them himself. A sadistic, tooth-bearing grin crosses his face at the very thought of it. Soon after the ceremony, the high priest descends into the dungeon, which he'd taken with a certain flourish to calling the game room. Here, he keeps his private collection of torture tools from around the world, each of which he takes great pleasure in using against the worms who refuse to bend the knee to his bloodthirsty god. In the game room, the air is suffused with a stink of blood and sweat. The prisoners who still have tongues start to scream when the high priest enters, knowing that everything is about to get so much worse for them. He's cultivated a certain reputation as a man willing to do anything to ensure the superiority of his infamous cult, the Brazen Heart. If ever you fell into his terrible clutches, escape was out of the question. The very best you could possibly hope for was a mercifully quick death. In the corner of the room, one unfortunate captive was twisted and shattered against a breaking wheel, but still torturously alive. In the corner across from him, another prisoner bleeds from the inside of a grimacing Iron Maiden that the High Priest had overseen the construction of personally. But that was only the very beginning of the High Priest's collection of terrible instruments. Prisoners teeter in agony on Judas cradles and Spanish donkeys. Skin is stretched and bones are cracked on racks. Some are pierced as they sit on the monstrous iron chair, while others simmer away in great vats of oil. Some scream as they hang from their wrists on the tenth round of strapado. Lead sprinklers, Spanish ticklers, thumbscrews, crocodile shears, choke pears, melee boots, heretics' forks, bastinado sticks, scolds' bridles, scavengers' daughters, the high priest has all of them, and he's adept at using them. But they all pale in comparison to his favorite piece a prized possession, gifted from the bosom of Moloch himself, the Liar's Cradle. Such a perfectly ingenious tool for physical pain and mental terror, it's positioned at the very center of the game room, just so every other prisoner and every other device can see him using it and know that it's their eventual fate. A mighty stone furnace with huge metal grates on either side. As the high priest approaches, he can see a terrified prisoner already writhing within the machine, when the prisoner sees him, the fear only gets worse. The high priest would have no mercy for him. He'd spent ten hours on the breaking wheel before this, and that felt like a pleasant sleep in a comfy king-sized bed compared to what he was about to endure. Two of the high priest's sadistic acolytes jab at him through the grates with red-hot pokers. The high priest grins and asks the prisoner what village he hails from. When the villager surrenders the information, the high priest gives a sagely nod he asks how old the prisoner is, and the prisoner says 27. Again, the high priest nods. He asks the prisoner whether he would like to leave and be with his family again, and of course, the prisoner replies yes. He has no idea that they're all already dead. The high priest smiles and says, Just one more question then, and you'll be free to go. What is my true name? The prisoner pauses for a moment, which earns them another jab with the poker. He tells the high priest that he doesn't know. He's jabbed again, and again, and again. He begins to cry and starts apologizing. He doesn't know the high priest's true name. How could he possibly tell him, no matter how much he's tormented? The high priest says, Well, just give me your best guess. Who knows? Perhaps you'll be lucky. The game room falls silent, all eyes on the prisoner in the liar's cradle. His lip trembles, knowing from the dark legends what will happen when he answers. He breathes a ragged sigh, accepts his fate, and guesses incorrectly. Suddenly, the prisoner screams as he catches fire. The high priest watches with unrestrained glee as the prisoner burns. He does so for around a minute, 
the fire burning far more intensely than it possibly should have. By the time it's done, the pile of ashes that was once the prisoner falls through the grate in the bottom of the liar's cradle. The high priest turns to the rest of the room and asks, Who's next? Of all the many adjectives you could use to describe SCP-2128, also known as the Liar's Cradle, Humane certainly isn't high on the list. This antique stone furnace was discovered deep in the dungeons of an undisclosed castle, believed to be a former refuge of a fringe occultic group known as the Brazen Heart, a cult of worshippers of the Canaanite deity Moloch, an entity mentioned several times in the Hebrew Bible. Among the deity's most notable traits is its bull-like appearance and the fact it requests burned human sacrifices. This feels extremely relevant, given the fact that the liar's cradle is all about giving its victims a fiery end. While the thaumaturgic methods used by members of the Brazen Hand to create the liar's cradle is unknown, what is clear are the cradle's capabilities and functions. When a human being is placed within the cradle and asked questions, a single lie will lead to them being anomalously incinerated. And the device's purview for a lie is frighteningly wide. A victim will be incinerated if something they say is factually untrue, regardless of the victim's personal knowledge. In other words, ignorance as an excuse will not save you. While the Brazen Heart was wiped out hundreds of years ago by soldiers of the Spanish Inquisition, the SCP Foundation has been able to glean some background information about the Liar's Cradle from a surviving document, a sheepskin scroll known as the Ignis Manuscript. This revealed that the cradle was invented around the 9th century CE, before being walled up in 1021 CE, and during its heyday, it was used as a torture device by Brazen Hand members against their enemies. While most torture is actually incredibly ineffective at getting information, studies have shown that under states of extreme duress, victims will simply say what they believe their captors want to hear in order to make the suffering stop. The Liar's Cradle is an excellent method of wringing information out of captives. Well, aside from the fact that one lie means the captive is immediately reduced to ashes. You see, SCP-2128 works on a true or false binary operating system that seems to imply an innate awareness of all knowledge. If you have enough captives to burn and know the right deductive or inductive questions to ask, it's possible to know almost anything in enough time. It's believed the Brazen Heart used the Liar's Cradle both for practical purposes and their own twisted amusement. Victims would be placed in the device and have their feet prodded with hot pokers while they were asked a series of increasingly probing questions about their life. Being forced to divulge extremely dark and personal secrets or meet their doom on the pyre. It was a depraved combination of physical and mental torture. If even hearing about all this makes you feel a little queasy, nobody could blame you for that. The SCP Foundation, however, looked at the Liar's Cradle and saw incredible potential. As mentioned earlier, the Liar's Cradle bases its judgment on raw factual knowledge, not the knowledge of its particular victims, so anyone with enough people to burn can conceivably work their way towards discovering any binary answer. And given that the SCP Foundation has an almost unlimited number of D-Class personnel at their disposal, it didn't take long for them to realize all the knowledge that was up for grabs. They just need to make a few sacrifices along the way, hoping to save more people in the long run. Moloch himself would probably be proud. It was this somewhat morally dubious chain of thought that led to the creation of Experimental Protocol 37 Sparafusil, the Foundation's plan to utilize the Liar's Cradle to discover more information that would assist in their mission to contain anomalies and protect the human race. The protocol is outlined in a five-step procedure that is as follows. 1. One D-Class employee, referred to as the Messenger, will be laid inside SCP-2128. 2. The Messenger will repeat statements as instructed from the prepared list. 3. After each statement, if the messenger remains unharmed, the statement is to be marked as true. 4. As soon as the messenger is incinerated, a new messenger is to be provided. The statement that triggered the incineration is to be marked as false. 5. A new messenger will be assigned. Repeat as needed. While the total extent of these tests remains off the record, the official files on SCP-2128 have some fascinating supplementals about some of the results of Experimental Protocol 37 Sparafusil. The first set of tests was designated EP-37 Sparafusil-22, Keter Checkup, and was conducted on January 10, 2014. The messenger in this case was D-6238. The first statement this D-Class was fed was, the human race is in danger of extinction right now. 
Seeing as D6238 didn't immediately go up in flames, this was found to be true. The second statement was, the danger comes from an item in Foundation custody. Much to the relief of the D-Class, this was also found to be true, and he lived to make another statement. This statement was, the dangerous item in question is located at a site in North America. This was, sadly, the D-Class's last words, as this statement proved to be false and he was immediately burned to death for his troubles. The next messenger brought in was a woman now known as D6239, after she committed an armed robbery that killed several innocents and landed her on death row. Her statement was, the dangerous item in question is located at a site in Europe. This caused her to be immediately incinerated. The SCP Foundation then continued to narrow their focus on this matter over the next 13 D-Classes. With the information they gained, they were able to narrow down that SCP-752, a subspecies of humans who are eager to displace and replace non-anomalous humanity, would be the cause of a containment breach that could potentially end the human race's dominance if they weren't stopped. D-6253 was given the statement, SCP-752 will breach containment within the next month. The answer was true. Next came, SCP-752 will breach containment within the next week. Also, this proved to be true. D-6253 would finally meet their maker with a false statement, SCP-752 will breach containment tomorrow. But this opened the door for the final correct answer delivered to us by D-6254, that SCP-752 will breach containment today. <gasps> Armed with this vital information in the nick of time, the Foundation dispatched MTF New 7, also known as Hammer Down, their largest and most well-armed mobile task force, to the site in question. This quick thinking allowed them to quell the threat at the exact right time and save the world from an SK-class dominance shift scenario that would have left humanity in the dust. Using the Liar's Cradle, the SCP Foundation had just saved the world as we know it, and all it had taken was a handful of D-class lives. So naturally, the tests with the Liar's Cradle didn't stop there. Next came EP-37 Sparafusil-23, Knowledge Measure. As the name suggests, this test hoped to ascertain the extent of the knowledge the Liar's Cradle possessed, seeing as it could continue to come in handy for Foundation purposes. The first messenger was D-7784, who was fed the statement, SCP-2128 knows everything. This turned out to be false and led to the D-Class's immediate incineration. However, the lead researcher on the case decided to take a different approach. Perhaps, he thought, the Liar's Cradle didn't accept the numerical designation that the Foundation had placed on it. The next messenger, D-7785, led with the statement, The Liar's Cradle knows everything, which proved true, because that allowed him to live long enough to be incinerated by his next statement, The Liar's Cradle will tell us everything. After his incineration, D-7786 stepped up to the metaphorical plate, first saying, The Liar's Cradle will tell me everything I need to know. The Cradle judged this to be true. It did not, however, take kindly to, The Liar's Cradle will tell the Foundation everything they need to know. It declared this statement false by immediately incinerating the D-Class. After this incineration, the EP-37 Sparafusil project was out of its daily allotted D-Classes and decided to call it a night. Their next test was the mysterious and controversial EP-37 Sparafusil-24 Sunday School Song which utilized D-7891 as its messenger. She was fed the statement, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. The results of this particular test have been permanently expunged from SCP Foundation records. Next came EP-37 Sparafusil-25, Pinocchio Paradox, which was an experiment intended to see how the liar's cradle would react to logical paradoxes. Spoilers, it doesn't involve as much incineration as you might expect. First came D-8232, who provided the statement, Telling the Liar's Cradle a paradox is dangerous to Foundation personnel. This was proven to be false, and ironically, he was burned alive immediately. Next came D-8233, with the statement, The Liar's Cradle is going to kill me right now. The Liar's Cradle bent its own rules by declaring this false, but only incinerating the D-Class enough to permanently disfigure him rather than killing him. D-8234 was shoved into the cradle after that, making the statement, The Liar's Cradle is going to burn me right now. This was proven through empirical observation to be false. Ten seconds passed without incineration. However, when D-8234 exited the cradle, he complained about sustaining a small cut on one of the rocks that made the cradle while climbing out of it. This caused D-8234 to rapidly succumb to a previously undiscovered form of gangrene and pass away in minutes. Finally, D-8235 entered and said, 
The liar's cradle is going to inflict physical harm upon me right now. This was proven false, and D-8235 climbed out of the liar's cradle unharmed. At this point, however, he began to cry and scream out the word, goodbye, before dying via altogether more unpleasant means that I don't wish to discuss in great detail here. The last experiment we have on record here is EP-37 Sparafusil-26, Subjective Opinion, which intended to see if the liar's cradle liked to turn logical gray areas into logical charred black areas. Messenger 1, D-9224, made the relatively uncontroversial statement, Golden Retrievers are cute. The cradle seemed to disagree, immediately incinerating him. The next messenger, D-9225, delivered the counterpoint, Golden Retrievers are ugly. And just like that, he was up in smoke. However, when Messenger 3, D-9226, delivered the wildcard statement, Golden Retrievers are tasty, everyone in attendance was surprised to find the liar's cradle completely agreed with this. When D-9226 delivered the completely understandable reaction, wait, what? That's freaking nasty! He was immediately reduced to ashes by the cradle's flames. With this line of questioning concluded in the strangest manner possible, the new messenger, D-9227, was brought in. Before becoming a member of D-Class personnel, his name was Stephen Kemp, a cannibalistic serial killer who'd murdered and eaten 14 women before being captured, tried, and put on death row for his crimes. He delivered the statement, I'm a good person. Surprisingly, the cradle felt this was true and let him live. However, when Stephen decided to get cocky and chime in with, Joke's on you, jackasses. Apparently I'm Mother Teresa. He was immediately incinerated due to the fact that he was not, in fact, Mother Teresa. His ashes were soon accompanied by that of D-9228, who made the statement, The liar's cradle is sometimes incorrect before being burned to death. Next came D-9229, who allowed for the longest streak of unbroken statements in the history of tests performed on the liar's cradle. He said, The liar's cradle speaks only infallible empirical truth. True. He said, The liar's cradle is hungry. True. He said, the liar's cradle's hunger can never be satiated no matter how full it becomes. True. He said, the liar's cradle would like to incinerate me right now. True. He said, the liar's cradle is growing impatient. True. He said, the liar's cradle sees delicious, warm meat on its plate and would very much like to be fed. True. He said, the liar's cradle is angry that it is continually denied its meat. True. He said, people meat is delicious. True. He said, I am delicious. True. He said, my skin is warm. True. He said, the crackling of fire upon boiling drips of fat and rapidly cauterizing flesh gives the liar's cradle pleasure. True. After such an incredible streak, that also allowed for a frightening insight into the apparent personality of the liar's cradle. D-9229 was withdrawn alive. He was replaced by D-9230, who said, The Earth is round, and was immediately incinerated. It's widely believed that this outcome came from the liar's cradle maliciously interpreting Earth as dirt, rather than the planet Earth, just so it could incinerate the subject. Just because the liar's cradle is largely objective doesn't mean it isn't incredibly petty, it would seem. Because of the static nature of SCP-2128, it has been given the rare, safe object class. Containment Site 403 has been built around the castle that currently holds SCP-2128, and a healthy supply of D-Class personnel is regularly siphoned off for EP-37 Sparafusil. The sadistic sorcerers of the Brazen Heart may be long gone, but in a strange and disturbing twist of fate, the researchers of the SCP Foundation are keeping the spirit of their work alive even today. Now go and watch another entry from the files of Dr. Bob, like SCP-987, The Gruesome Gallery, for another terrifying anomalous object that reveals some terrifying truths. And make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single anomaly as we delve further and further into the SCP Foundation's classified archives.